Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. My friends over at Radiotity sent me a GC5 to test out. I am all excited about this one. Let's go take a look. This is the GC5 and the FCC ID is 2AN62-GC5. Manual. This manual is all English. All English, all the time. This looks a lot like the UV-17 manual because this looks a lot like the UV-17, but it is in a much better color. It is green because the color of your radio matters. We have a battery, 1800 milliamp hour, 8.4, 7.4, same as the UV-17, but in radiotity clothing. This is a screw down battery, so let's screw it down. All right, that is screwed down. No flashlight on the bottom. We have a flashlight on top instead. Not bad. What else do we get in the box? We have a pretty decent antenna. It is 136 to 174 and 400 to 520. And it is SMA female and SMA male on the radio itself. We have the top secret agent earpiece, a lanyard, belt clip, and the belt clip screws into the back of the radio and not into the back of the battery. Warning, UV 19. Dun 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 UV 19. And then our multi cradle. Snap that in place. That actually goes in real smooth. That's a better fit. I like that. Let's get that belt clip screwed on. All right, belt clip is all screwed on. The GC5 sticker on the bottom is kind of coming off, but I have had this heating up in my car, so that sticker is probably not going to last down there. Welcome. Oh. Channel mode. Is that the same lady? The screen looks the same as the UV17. The battery is fully charged. One, four, six. Frequency mode. One, four, six, five, two. Zero. All right, and there are a couple of extra buttons. You have a VFO MR button and an AB button here instead of missing those buttons on the UV-17. And then you have a little bit of a different up and down arrow feel. And like I said before, no flashlight on the bottom. Flashlight on the top. I still don't know why they put flashlights on radios, but you know, whatever. All right, let's go through the menus. Menu. Squelch. Step, transmit power, save, box, wide narrow, ABR, TDR, beep prompt, timeout timer, R receive tone, receive digital tone, transmit tone, transmit digital tone, scan for tones, nice, scan for digital tones, nice, save mode, and you can save all, receive, or transmit, voice, turn her on or off, language, DTMF, ST, S code, SC rev, PTT ID, PTT, I don't think that's an L, I could be wrong though, PTT LT, oh, lost the name, MDFA, MDFB, Memory display field, I guess. BCL, auto lock, SFTD, offset, memory channel, delete channel, all mod, alarm mod, alarm mode. I mean, they have room to put that there. So it doesn't tell you what all of the different menu options are by voice. Confirm. Only a couple of them. It'd be nice if all of them were announced or not announced. Like if I go into menu. Squelch, Squelch, it'll tell me Squelch, but it won't tell Squelch. me... Confirm. It won't tell me what the level of Squelch is. Maybe a firmware upgrade, they could do a release. You can see that screen timeout is pretty fast. All right, I don't remember where we were. Let's start off at alarm mode. STE, RP, STE, RPT, RL, Roger Beep, on or off, tone, menu exit time, Vox delay, power on message, logo or voltage, voice priority, reset BFO or all, power on password, stopwatch, again with the stopwatch people, and then firmware version 0 0.08 and hardware 0 01, and we wrap around to the beginning of the menu. And then this has the same signal strength indicator and menu. dual VFOs. Let's see how dirty this thing is. For testing, we are going to need the Tiny SA, which means the Tiny SA Go Bag. There will be details on this Go Bag in a video up at the top there for you. I'm going to need my attenuator, and I'm going to need my Tiny SA. I do not want the power of the radio overpowering the Tiny SA. And I'm going to direct wire this thing again, because I like that. A radio, 40 dB attenuator and tiny SA. Let's get these harmonics tested out. Are there any harmonics? And the way we find out is with this tiny SA, I'm gonna go in and do all of my configuration for you. I'm gonna measure harmonic. 
of 146.52 megahertz. And then I am going to display, draw a line for the second part of the test, 16. Dot, whoa, that's not good. Not 166, 16.02 times 1. So what you have to do on your secondary frequencies, your non-primary, you have to be below this blue line and 40 dB down. Not just 40 dB down. There's actually two tests for this, and this will give me both reference marks that I need. I need to account for my external attenuator of minus 40 dB so that all the measurements are good, and then you'll see that line adjust itself down. And then we are good to go. I want to check that the radio is in the right frequency, 146.52, and it's in high power. And while I was doing that with the PTT held down, it's trying to sort itself out. It's getting real close, and we just hit that blue line. We're just below that blue line. That is fantastic. So our primary is 32. Our secondary is 53 down from 32. So that is fantastic. She gets a pass. I like it. And just for grins, let's do this on low power Ready. also. Power. Confirmed. And it should be just as good on low power. Oh, that is weird. Let's try it one more time. Oh, that's interesting. Low power, not good. Huh. So let's do menu. Menu. Power. Confirm. High power. That is so interesting. Let's see what kind of power this thing puts out. So here we have the radio plugged into the Shorecom SW102 with its perfectly matched ground plane and the built-in rubber duck that comes with the radio. And we're gonna do some power testing. Let's see where we are at. We are at 146.52 on high power. And look at that power output, holy moly. I saw 7.5 at the peak, 1.9 SWR. So if you got a better antenna, it would be even more power, 146.52. Let's do low power. All right, this is low power. Low power is 1.4 watts with an even higher SWR. Ah, okay, let's let's see if that was the problem. Let's tighten that up, let's tighten that up, tighten that up, tighten that up, try again. Yeah, that's weird. So that's why this thing is acting the way it is. So we've got 1.45 watts, 4.65 out, 146.52 is the frequency. Let's change to 446. All right, we're on 446 on low power. Let's try that again. 3.73 watts, 2.38 SWR, and it does say 446, so that's good. Confirm. All right, we're on high power on 70 centimeters. 5.45 watts, 2.49 SWR on 446. And it's not uncommon for the antenna to be different resonances on different frequencies. It is about six o'clock. We are at dusk here. And that was with the sun directly behind us. Let's get over to the other direction. There was a good spot. So this is what it looks like outdoors at dusk time. Not bad at all. And then this radio also has the signal strength indicator directly underneath of the frequency. And you can see what looks like two bars and then no bars as we move a little bit. And we're back to two bars. So that's a useful little tool right there. So Radiati has got you covered. If you are one of those people that likes to use your radio in a car like this, there is a USB-C charging option so you can charge on the go. And also, because Radiati likes to do awesome things, they give you the ability to have more battery capacity when you get the USB-C rechargeable battery. Get two. They're small. Let's do a received audio test. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf on a received audio test. KM9G54321-12345. Let's do a transmitted audio test. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf on a transmit audio test. 54321 one, two, three, four, five. The Radiotity GC5, clean on transmit out, a signal strength indicator so you can do some fox hunting with it. Fantastic price. There is a link in the description down below for more info on this radio and its price and all kinds of other little features. There is a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.